about to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Hi guys and welcome back to another Meals of the Week video Now if you watch our family vlogs you may be noticing something a little bit different we finally painted the wall. I said in my last vlog that I really wasn't happy with the colour and it was a one space in the house that I absolutely hated. And um, We've gone for this hog blue and I absolutely love it. What we're going to do is put some shelves up here and we're going to create a picture wall as well. I'm not sure whether the mirrors stay in there but I actually think it really goes and I love the way it reflects my pictures. But what I wanted to say is we've got two new additions to our picture wall. I think these might be going up in the hallway or I am tempted, if I don't put a shelf up here, I'm actually tempted to put them on this wall, like rearrange them and put some other ones in amongst them. But I've just got to show you these two. Any Game of Thrones fans out there, how amazing are these pictures? Now these were kindly gifted to me by the people over at Crown and Poor and they turned up this morning and I am literally amazed. All you do is send in your pet's photo and then you can choose from a whole range of costumes Look at little Hobbs as Jon Snow. And the funny fact is, Hobbs' pedigree name is Jon Snowy. And then we've got Siren as Mother of Dragons, which if you know her, totally suits her. I just absolutely love them. And I know this is a Meals of the Week video, but I had to show you because I know everyone's going to go, have you moved house? Are you in a different room? Because your walls changed colour. But I had to show you these pictures. Now, I have got a discount code for these. It is Folger Fam, and you get 10% discount. But honestly, I think these would make an amazing present. Like, if you don't know what to get someone, or someone that is as obsessed with their pets as I am. I mean, you know me, with French Bulldogs all over the house. Anything French Bulldog I get, I just think they're brilliant. And there's so many different outfits you can choose. You can have, like, kings and queens. You can go for superheroes. They've got Harry Potter, Peaky Blinders. You name it, you can find anything to suit on this. And I can't wait to finish my wall and get my shelves up so I can arrange them properly but I just think he's amazing I just oh his little eyes so cute I think that they just made me smile so much today so thank you so much to the guys at Crown and Port like I said I will leave all their details in the description box along with a discount code and now I've finished chattering on about that let's go and have a look at what we've eaten over the last week or so so I'm just starting tonight's dinner, or actually already started it. I'm going to be making Frank's Red Hot Buffalo potato skins. So I've been marinating my chicken since this morning, so probably about six hours in the Frank's Red Hot Buffalo sauce. I've just had it in this bag. This is just one kilo of chicken breast. So I've just poured enough in to coat the chicken and then closed up the bag. What I'm going to do now is pop it in the oven, cover it with some foil and just oven it so that it stays quite tender. I was gonna do it on the grill, but I don't want it to go too dry because it's gotta go back in the oven once it's in its skins. So that's gonna go in the oven until it's cooked, which will probably take between 25 and 30 minutes. And I've got my potatoes here. All I did was wash them and dry them, and then I pricked the skins and rubbed some olive oil and salt into them. And then they've been in the oven on 200 degrees for probably about 50 minutes to an hour. And then I'm going to cut them in half, scoop out some of the middle and fill them with a buffalo and cream cheese mixture. Top them with grated cheese and some spring onion, put them back in the oven. So for now I'm just going to put this in. Right, so what I'm going to do with each potato is just cut them in half. And then I'm going to scoop out the inside. Now normally when I make potato skins, I mix whatever I'm going to fill them with in with the potato and put it back in. But... This time round, I'm actually going to save the potato and use it for something else, maybe fish cakes or something. I'm just going to pop it in a bag and it can go in the freezer because I want the filling to be a little bit more intense, a bit more flavourful and the potato does kind of dull it down a little bit. So I'm going to leave like that much around the edges and what I'm going to do is put a little bit of my spray oil on the inside and these are going to go back in the oven so they go nice and crispy again because they've gone a little bit soft. So you want to do that with each one. Tonight we are running on the right track. I know we never gonna look back. So I've just given each one a spray with my rapeseed oil spray. 
and then what I've done is where I made little, um, when I went a bit too far with the spoon in some of them and went right through to the skin, I've kind of patched it up with the extra potato, so just pressed it down with my finger, because when you're scooping out sometimes you do just go that little bit too far, so I've just built them back up a tiny bit if they needed it. Um, what I'm going to do now is pop them in the oven because I've already got it on for the chicken, so they're going to take about probably 15, 10 to 15 minutes and then they'll be nice and crispy again, ready for me to mix up the fillings. Right, so my chicken is cooked and what I'm gonna do now is just pull it apart and then I'm gonna mix it with some cream cheese, some more Frank sauce and some mature cheddar. And then it's gonna go back into its skins. Now I've shredded my chicken and I've got one tub of um, cream cheese. I've actually got loads of chicken here, but I'm going to make it all up because you can always freeze it if you don't use it all. And I've also got some grated cheddar to put in. This is like an entire tub. This is just the little one. I think it's like 50p. I'm just going to pour some more Frank's hot sauce over to mix it. Right, so now I'm just going to start filling the skins. Right, so on this tray I've got some for the boys and Oscar and I've got another tray of the just chicken ones over there. I saved some chilli from last night's dinner to do Oscar's because the Franks is quite spicy and the chilli wasn't that hot so rather than risk him not eating it I thought I'd just do him some because he loves the chilli ones. So he can always try one of these because we've got loads and <laughs> we've ended up with quite a bit but it's always good to have leftovers some cheese on his and to go with these I'm actually doing a barbecue baked beans all I've done is got some baked beans put some tomato puree and some barbecue seasoning and then either and then I'm going to bake them in the oven while this is all in <laughs> dinner smells good okay, so here are our beans out of the oven and our first batch of the potato skins the buffalo ones and the chili ones Right, so here we are dished up. I've gone all fancy and put them on slate. <laughs> and we've got our barbecue beans in our little heart dish. And I might just cut one open to show you what they look like. So here we are cut open and this is what the inside looks like. They look really nice. So for tonight's dinner I've just made the boys a pasta and hot dog bake. I've just mixed in some tomato puree, some cooked pasta, a few mixed beans and some hot dog sausages and then some seasoning and I've topped it with cheese and on the older two I've put some mega mega hot and spicy crisps they're the Seabrook ones but we bought them in Lidl and they were called something like insanely fiery they're just too hot to eat so I've sprinkled a few on the top because they like spice but they're just too much as crisps so I've also done some carrot and cucumber just on the side and this is what the boys are having tonight so I thought I'd show you the bag, it's these Seabrook crisps, it does say warning extreme heat, dare you eat the heat, fiery to scorching hot Trinidad scorpion chilli. They are ridiculous, I mean Steve and I absolutely love hot food and I think I've got quite a high tolerance but these made me cry, literally. I've just sprinkled a few on top because I think they'll cope with it. So for dinner tonight, Steve and I have got Cajun chicken and paprika halloumi salad. I've just done the chicken on our grill with some Cajun seasoning. And the halloumi I've just put like dry fried with some smoked paprika. Then we've got lettuce, red onion, tomato. We've got some of the pepper dew peppers, mayo and cucumber. And we've also got some Frank's red hot sauce if we want it. And it's light mayonnaise. So this is what we've got for dinner tonight. So it is 7.59 in the morning. I'm just starting dinner. I'm getting ahead today. I've popped some chicken breast in my slow cooker along with two tins of tomatoes. 
And I've also found these in the cupboard, these Sharwoods Thai Red Curry pastes. So I've put two of those in as well. And we'll see what happens. The plan is to have this in the little Mexican wraps that we've got with some feta cheese. But I'm just going to pop the lid on and let it cook. And then later on towards the end of cooking, I might put a big spoon of cream cheese in just to make it a little bit creamy. And then pull it apart with some forks and shred it and then we can have it in wraps. So Thai red curry feta Mexican lime <laughs> wraps. So make it up as you go a long day today. Right, so here is the chicken. This is what it's turned out like. It's a bit black around the edges. Um, but I think that's because the Thai sauce was quite sticky. I haven't added any cream cheese because I don't think it needed it. I've tasted it and it's actually really, really good. So I've just got some little crispy fries in the air fryer. And I'm going to pop this in some bowls and I'll show you it all plated up. So this is it all plated up. We've got some feta cheese. We've got our Thai chilli curry kind of thing. <laughs> got some savoury chips. Not savoury chips. Obviously they're savoury. Um, I think they're called lightly spiced. And then we've got our mini lime and chilli tortillas. So this is dinner for tonight. And I might show you one rolled up maybe. Depends what they look like. And I said I'd show you one wrapped up. I've also added some of the little red jalapenos that we get in the jar from Tesco. And this is what we've got for our dinner tonight. Okay, so we are just starting marinating some meat for our barbecue that we're going to have later. We're going to do lamb kebabs and pork kebabs. Um, I'm just going to show you some raw meat, so if you're not keen on that, look away now. <laughs> I'm actually going to show you my husband carving it up. Steve's just trimming all the fat. He's already done the pork, which is in here. And then he's just trimming the lamb shoulder. And this is pork leg in here. It's been hard at work for probably about half an hour now, haven't you? Three hours later. Yeah, it's taken a long time. Um, um, for the pork, actually, they're both Jamie Oliver marinades then, aren't they? Are they? The lamb one was, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. And the pork, if you can hear sniffing, it's because Steve's got hay fever, sorry. I'm not sniffing and dripping on the meat. Oh, nice. Right, so <laughs> the pork marinade, basically, I'm winging it a little bit. So we're going to use a teaspoon of fennel seeds, quarter of a teaspoon of cumin seeds, two cloves. We've got um, a heaped teaspoon of smoked paprika, the zest and juice of one orange. Oh, I don't need lemon. I read that right, so I don't need the lemon. We haven't got orange, so I'm going to just put a capful or so of orange squash. It'll just give it orangey flavour. Um, four cloves of garlic, which I need to get out, and some thyme. And then I need some tomato ketchup and balsamic vinegar. We've got 1.9 kilos of pork. So I can leave the link to his marinade down below in case you want to try it. He uses a, what's he using, 1.6, so yeah, roughly the same. So these are basic, the basic things I'm going to put in, but I'll show you as I go along. Right, so we're going to start with one teaspoon of fennel. I absolutely love fennel. I do too. It smells so good. I'm going to start with one teaspoon of fennel. And we are going to add half a teaspoon of cumin. Can you see that? Yeah. These pots, because they've got holes in the top, <laughs> you end up not really getting in. Half a teaspoon of... Oh, I don't hate it when your phone goes on. Half a teaspoon of cumin, two cloves. So I reckon two cloves is probably half a teaspoon. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> right, add a heaped tablespoon of paprika, smoked paprika. Um, if I take the lid off, it might be easier. A heaped tablespoon. Oh, that's pretty heaped. Oh, it smells good. What else do we want? Uh, the zest and juice of one orange. How much do you reckon the zest and juice would be? A, table, a couple of tablespoons? Yeah, I think it's concentrates, so then maybe. One tablespoon? Yeah, one tablespoon. Yeah. People think we're mad. <laughs> orange squash in yeah. the thing. Well it's just to give that orangey flavour isn't it? Yeah. And I'm actually going to give it a little squeeze of lemon juice because that will give it a bit more of the citrus that it wanted if you know what I mean. Yeah. Peel and finely chop four cloves of garlic, 150 ml of ketchup. So what is a tablespoon? 15. So it's about 10 tablespoons isn't it? Yeah, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. I think that's about 150 ml isn't it? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Oh, 
Well, that's 500 ml bottles, so what was left in there. Yeah, it's Half is 250. Yeah, I reckon that probably is. Cover that. Six tablespoons of balsamic. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to put my thyme. It says fresh thyme. That's what we should get, actually, because... Yeah, we'll buy one. Yeah, because we were going to make our um, herd garden, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. It says fresh thyme, but we haven't got time. <laughs> we haven't got time uh, to get fresh thyme. So I, it says a small bunch, so I reckon a small bunch would probably be a tablespoon. Yeah. Yeah. We have got basil, mint... Um, what else have we rosemary. Got growing? Chives. Oh, yeah, we've got rosemary. Well, but I think we need rosemary in the land, don't we? Yes. Yeah. That. So all I've got to do now is just chop my garlic cloves, so I'll be back. Right, so I've got my garlic here. My battery is flashing, <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is mix the pork in with it, and then we're going to put them in bags, aren't we? Yeah, and then leave them to marinate. Hobbits. Spoon for hobbits. Hobbits is clattering around. I know, he's like, ooh, I'm drop a bit. this together first. It smells lovely. It does smell good, it's very mm. garlicky. I'm just going to put my pork in there. Oh, I don't, uh, no. don't be silly, Vicky. <laughs> Why don't I pour? I was going to say. Yeah. I'm trying to squish that into that little bowl. No, I'm going to pour my marinade over the pork. That makes more sense. I think you should have done it the other way, wouldn't it? Funny. <laughs> oh dear. If I had a brain, I'd be dangerous. No. <laughs> Just don't use it, do I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks really good. Oh, look at that. We've never done pork leg on a barbecue before, have we? Right. We've done our lamb. We've got oh, orange squash pork. You heard it here first. Eat your heart out, Jamie Oliver. But you've never used little squash in your recipes. <laughs> You'll be on the phone later. Vicky, mate. I heard you've been using little squash in your recipes. Can I have a recipe? That's a banging idea. Yeah, can I copy? Copyright, Jamie, sorry. There we go. We'll pop that in a freezer bag and put it in the fridge. And we've got, what is it, nine o'clock? We're probably going to eat about six, I think. Yeah, yeah. I reckon. He's nearly there. <laughs> He's still coming. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want the faff, buy it already diced and cubed. Yeah, I nearly did as well, but this was reduced, so you have to do it. Right, that's going to go in the fridge, and then I'll start on the lamb one. So with all the bones from the lamb, I'm actually going to make a stock. So I've just covered them with water, and I've put some carrots that are need using up out of the fridge, some fresh rosemary, a couple of garlic cloves. I've just chopped them in half and put them in. I haven't peeled them, and I had half a red onion in the fridge as well, so I've just quartered that and popped that in. And then I'm going to let this boil and I'll probably leave it on for about an hour and a half. And then I will transfer it into a jug and put it in the fridge. And then tomorrow I'll just scrape the fat off, put the stock that's left over in the freezer and that will make a really nice shepherd's pie. So for the lamb, all we're using is about five tablespoons of lemon juice. How much are we going to? Uh, one heat tablespoon heat of Heat tablespoon organa. of that. Two grated cloves of garlic and that's it. Mix and we'll together. we'll probably put a bit of salt and pepper as well. Uh, yeah, definitely. And that's it. Funny how the story goes, little hope of bigger dreams. Down, singing louder than the crowd. Ah, the rhythm. I'm feeling brand new. Keep pushing forward. It's gonna save you. Never look down, love. I'm not when we shine so bright. So we're just starting to put our kebabs on the grill. This is the lamb. And then Steve's got ahead of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I come running out with the camera going, No! I haven't filmed it yet! Okay, we've got the pork ones. Looking good. Oh, oh yeah, look at them. So I know. Good. So these are all the pork, these are the lamb. I will leave the Jamie Oliver marinade link down below that we used. They smell so good. Though. I know. Bobbits. Yeah, so you're waiting. You good boy. And then we have got some just some pretzels. I've made a salad, we've got lettuce, cucumber, some feta, some olives, some yoghurt and some mint sauce. 
And then we bought this today, this Nando's Peri Peri sauce. It's coconut and lemon, which as you know, I absolutely love mm -hmm. coconut. So we're gonna try that. And, and then I've good. got my rosemary chips in the oven. So these are the pork kebabs. We've got the lamb ones here. These are our rosemary chips. And then we've got some salad and I'm just waiting for Steve to bring out the flatbreads. <laughs> Running up the garden with the flatbreads. I'll show you mine when it's assembled. I'll show you in the light because I can't really see that but over here. So I've got my chips and I've got some lamb and some pork in my flatbread and some salad. And that's what I've got for dinner tonight. So for tonight's dinner I'm making shepherd's pie, like proper shepherd's pie with um, lamb mince. And I've just started off my mince. So in here I've got two red onions, some garlic, like about two cloves of garlic. I've got some salt and pepper, lamb mince. And then I've also got two tablespoons of tomato puree. And then in here I've got my carrots and they're boiling in lamb stock because we used a lamb shoulder and so when we'd cut all the meat off I boiled up the bones and froze the stock. So there's lamb stock in there, there's also a beef stock cube and then I'm going to add this water once the carrots are boiled into this. I'm going to put some Worcestershire sauce in. I'm also going to put in one of these red wine stock pots which smell very very whiny, we've just sniffed it <laughs> and I'm going to pop that in there as well and then somebody said that whenever they make shepherd's pie I need two hands to do this um, they put a tablespoon of mint sauce in as well because obviously it's lamb so I'm going to try that as well and I just thought I'd show you that little bit because it's something I've not added the stock pots before and I've also not added mint sauce so we will see so I've decided to add some fresh mint because I've now got my herb garden in the garden and um, I've got fresh mint growing so I thought there's no point in putting mint sauce in so I've just picked a few leaves and washed them and chopped them up and I've got everything in here now, it smells so good and now I'm going to let this simmer for a good hour and then I'm going to pop my mash on, put some cheese and pop it in the oven. So here it is out of the oven and it's gone really nice and crispy on top. I've just topped it with some mash and some cheddar and a little bit of parmesan and then popped it back in the oven. So that's it for this week guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have then please give it a thumbs up and make sure to go and subscribe if you're not already. I really would appreciate you sticking around. I do these videos every week. I also do shopping hauls and cook with me, family vlogs, that kind of thing. Make sure to go and check out Crown and Paul for these amazing pet portraits. I absolutely am in love with them. I can't stop looking at them. And I will be back very soon with another video. Take care, guys. This is what we waited for.